Hey everyone, Andy Swan here. By now, you're probably aware that I'm the men's ministry director at Arizona Community Church. But what you may not be aware of is I am a retired police officer. So I wanna share a story with you that occurred fairly early in my career. I had recently reconnected with an old high school friend and he was really impressed that I was in law enforcement. So I figured I could really ramp up my level of impressiveness if I took him on a ride along and he could see me in action. So I check out an unmarked patrol car and off we go. So there we are, we're on patrol on I-17 and of course he's asking me for some of my cool cop stories. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this knucklehead in a sports car comes flying up behind us, making risky lane changes in the process. And then as he blasts past us, he reaches over and hangs me the bird. Well, my friend was pretty excited that this guy was gonna be really surprised when he discovered who I was. So I hit the lights, sports car pulls over, I get out, leave my friend in the car, and I make contact with the driver. I had a polite but professional conversation with him, got his driver's license and some other paperwork, and then I go back to the, to the police car. Well, this was out of the norm for me. Ordinarily, what I would do is I would carefully scan the outside and particularly the inside of the car for anything that might be dangerous or incriminating, and then I would have the driver step out with me while I conducted business. But in this case, I was more concerned with visiting with my friend than I really was in doing my job. So I get back to the patrol car and my friend says, what did he say? So I gave him all the excuses that the guy came up with and so on and so forth. And he says, cool, what did he say about the gun? Well, I look through the rear window of the sports car and on the dash, plain as day, there's a big old handgun. I could feel my level of impressiveness fall to the floor. Ultimately though, other than my deep humiliation, nothing really bad came out of that. But it occurs to me that I was so focused on impressing my friend that not only did I not do my job, but in failing to pay attention to what was going on around us, I had placed us both in jeopardy. You ever have a, a situation like that? You ever? been so focused on the wrong thing that you missed something critically important? Well, if you're over the age of about four, I'm gonna guess you probably have. Interestingly, Jesus spoke about this. In Luke chapter 16, he's talking specifically about money, but it really applies to anything in our lives. When he says that a man cannot serve two masters, he loves one, he hates the other. And what that means for us is that if we're too focused on ourselves or on worldly things, then we cannot truly love and serve God the way he deserves and the way we ought to. Now, earlier in Luke, in chapter 12, Jesus speaking to his disciples, but also to us, he says that we are not to be anxious about our lives. He tells us not to seek what we're going to eat or what we're going to drink or what we're going to wear or any of that stuff. But instead, we are to seek God's kingdom, and everything else will be given to us. Now, I encourage you to read those chapters. I really think it'll help you to keep those kinds of things in mind as you're going about your daily business. I know it does me. That's all I got for now. If the Lord wills it, I'll see you again real soon.